us afresh for the service, give us a fresh baptism in the unction of the Holy Ghost. Give us an unction feeling now that we may celebrate to please you. Give us an unction feeling now uh, that we may exalt you, dear God, with the best of our human ability. But Father, if you would release us from flesh so that our spirits will soar before you in glory. That the things we say, we feel, we believe, we preach and we hear at this appointed time. That we will seize the moment to bless you. Because you alone are worthy. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. For this opportunity to stand before you one more time. This may be the last time. None of us know. But while we have this opportunity, we glorify you, Father. We lift up Jesus under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name we thank you. Let us hand of God say amen. amen. Give God a praise off in the house for seven years.
is that God's everlasting love. And uh, so then, uh, Philippians 1, verses 1 through 6, and God's everlasting love, or married together in divine sublimity. So that's where we will be today. Now, let's stand and read, please, if you will. Philippians chapter 1, the theme chosen for this celebration. <coughs> Pastors, blending, thank God for you, they have and, and I say this out of your out of, out of your earshot that uh, that you are that you are blessing and that you are blessing to the Father, but you're also a blessing to me. 180 some odd sons and daughters and several pastors. You you are you are a chip off the old block <laughs> in, in, in every aspect and every and I'm sure those in North East North East uh, have. Um, have noticed that and have embraced that. Dorothy Tubman, thank you for that, for that uh, wonderful, wonderful introduction and for you and for making it personal. Thank you very much. Um, the verses uh, one through six. Let's read, please. Paul and the servants of to all which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Divinity. 
Three is the Trinity of God. Baptizing him in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, verse 19. God has woven into the heart of his creation his existence, our existence, experience of knowledge, and, a, and, and, and an experience of God, a trinity of things, a trinity of things. That three is, uh, three is a special number that, 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 that evolved from God, not named by man, but from God. Uh, three in one are these, beginning, middle, and end. Heaven, earth, and sea. Mother, father, and child. Morning, noon, and night. Right, middle, and left. Knowledge, action, and experience. Body, soul, and spirit. Limb, breath, and height. Many instances of the number three in the scriptures could, should be, uh, could be given, but I will stop here. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. And today and forever and ultimately, Jesus rose. He <laughs> says, and three days Amen. I shall raise the temple again. So seven then, uh, big, big pen, it, you're right, is the earth, and I may add, is the earth crowned with heaven. The union of earth and heaven. Four and three, the creature manifesting the great creator. Completion, the number seven. Now, we're here to celebrate uh, the seventh year. Seventh year, uh, and seven speaks of fullness, of completion, and accomplishment, and rest. For northeast and pastures, blending, it, it, it speaks of completeness to this point. No, be to this point. On your journey. Tomorrow will be the beginning of the eighth year. Tomorrow. This is the day. This is this is this is the exact Sunday uh, seven years ago that you had your first service. Tomorrow is the beginning of a new eight year. Run, no, do seven year run, but it begins with number eight. Eight is the number of. So watch this, watch this. So, so thank God for the accomplishment and the celebration. And boy, oh man, you, you, you're in the right place at the right time, but rest will come. We got to continue on the building of the Lord. Now let's go to our text. So let's see what the text says. And we're going to come back to the celebration. Uh, everybody said, Joy for the journey. Joy. Saints, both wells, we can rejoice no matter what is going on around us or to us. We must always rejoice. God does not make bad days. The Bible says uh, we must remember this is another day the Lord has made. We must, we shall, we have to rejoice and be glad in his day. Paul demonstrates this in the book or his letter to the Philippians. I heard about a waitress who couldn't get a smile out of her customer, no matter how hard she tried. The sad woman sat there looking miserable and depressed and dejected all through dinner. As the lady paid her bill and was leaving, the waitress warmly said, have a nice day. The woman responded coldly, I'm sorry, but I have made other plans. <laughs> my brothers and my sisters, both flocks of the well, if any of us have made other plans, then to be happy and to rejoice in the salvation that God has given us through Jesus Christ, may the word today release us from the bondage of sadness and misery and fill us with everything. That's the huh? Huh? Earth has no sorrow. Earth has no sorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's a trials and tribulation. But joy always comes in the morning. Every morning. Today's sermon is 
about joy and memories that we lifted from the six verses of uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians in chapter 1 about joy and memories. The kind, uh, the kind of joy, the kind of memories that is not dependent upon external circumstances, but the kind that comes from knowing the God of joy and the God of everlasting love. The letter to the Philippians is one of the so-called prison epistles or prison letters. Uh -huh. uh, that means it was one of the letters to the churches that Paul wrote while he was incarcerated, while he was chained to a Roman soldier. From the moment we are spiritually reborn, uh, from the moment we are washed in the blood of the Lamb, until the time we die, saints of God, our Christian lives will be filled with triumphs and tragedies. However, like Paul, in the midst of life's trials, God allows us to recall memories that will encourage us in the hour of need. Um, look back, reflect back seven years ago, uh, the challenges and the need uh, for pastors and for Northeast, but look back over the challenges and, and when you reflect on them, then look what God has done. Uh, it was just a catalyst to bring you to where you are today. All Christians eventually encounter or have already entered the ring of discouragement. The natural response to it is to reevaluate the ministry to which we have been called. When there are challenges and discouragement, uh, we, we, we reflect on things like, does my ministry really matter? Are my motives completely pure? Is all the trouble really worth it? Is all the sacrifice really worth it? Uh, uh, but listen, we've had to lock the doors and open the doors and back in the cabinet and, and do all of these things to get to seven years. Those who come after the seven years have been accomplished shall know what the pain and, and the agony and the prayers and the struggle it took to get to the seven years. Those who were here at the beginning, you know what it took to get to where you are now. You don't celebrate until you've gone through the trial and the tribulation to bring you to where you are. Questions, questions about the future accompanied by glorious recollections of the past will lead to spiritual defeat. Let me help us here. Let me help us today. During these times, we should call to mind the goodness of God and the goodness of his everlasting love. Uh, and, and when we call to memory of God's everlasting love and, and God never leaving us, this will give us joy for the journey. Uh, the journey won't be easy, but it'll give us joy for the journey. Jesus said, in this journey, you shall have tribulation. You will have some concerns and problems or needs. But be a uh, good joy.
heard that the records of Luke indicate that the epistle of, of the letter to the Philippians was written from Rome in AD 61 or 62. Although Paul was being held under house arrest for two years, he continued to minister through letters and personal meetings according to Acts chapter 28. He was in prison writing about joy. Joy is not a sudden going to clap your hand and jump up and down to kill it. Joy is a way of life. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to teach. Jesus. All right. You read it in the six verses. 
seeing people except Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and as the Lord of their life more than compensated for everything Paul had endured while bringing the gospel to you. Let me tell you, when you got a pastor's heart, yeah. ah, when just one comes down and accepts Christ, then everything else that you've gone through to reach that one soul is more compensation than you will ever know. All right, thank you. With a heart filled with gladness and joy, Paul wrote to his beloved church at Philippi. The letter is both practical in application and powerful in uh, inspiration. Watch this. In the prologue of this great epistle, of this great letter, we begin to see the valuable insights of Paul in, in the context of godly remembrance. Now, all remembrance are not God. Now, some things we ought not ever remember. Well, if you bury them in the sea of forgetfulness, don't you get a shell. But there's some godly remembrances uh, that will cause you, oh God, your joy to be intensified. Watch this. What's this? Paul wrote about God giving uh, relationships in verse 1. Verse 1, verse 1, verse 1. Paul said, Paul said in verse 1. What, what's this? What's this? Paul said, Paul said in verse 1. Paul said, uh, Paul and Timothy, the service of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace unto you. And he said, I thank God for the remembrance of you in the third verse. Saints of the living God, our first dynamic of recall, as I head to a close, should be God-given relationships. Okay. In the body of Christ, we should move from just membership mm. to relationships. All right, all right. Memberships rise and memberships fall. Mm -hmm. Memberships come in and memberships go out. Mm -hmm. Membership uh, uh, pats you on the back and stab you at the same time. Mm -hmm. Membership just glorify you, lift up your name, but then they can also curse you in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. But when you got relationships, Paul and Timothy does not only refer to equality, it also speaks 
speaks of encouragement, the word bond servant literally means one bound to another. Paul was chained to a Roman soldier while under house arrest. Watch this. However, it is clearly evident that there is immense joy within his heart while being under house arrest, chained to a heathen. Paul encouraged the Philippians to rejoice. He says rejoice. Don't just rejoice. Rejoice with me. I'm rejoicing. You know, you're not chained to a heathen. I mean, you, you, got, you, you got the freedom to rejoice in church. You, can, you got the freedom to go to church and worship God and praise God. You got that freedom and you don't show any joy. Keep your eyes fixed upon Jesus in every location. 
two, three, and four. And five together. So it's <laughs> These are right. Verse two, four, two, three, four, five. God's reward. But the Lord God gives us a reward for a charity. He gives us a reward for being faithful and working. Uh, working for kingdom building. But, but you can't work in your kind of way. You can't sing songs of Zion with a frown on your face. You can't play God's instruments just for a paycheck. Preachers, you can't even be busy about and thinking about fear of the Luca. Thinking about money when you are rightly dividing the word of God. You can't choose to preach at the big church but not at the small church. Preach it. Let me tell you, we got our rewards messed up. Really? What you say? God's rewards are verse 2 through 5. God, what's it? What's it? Verse 2. Uh, it says, God, it says, grace to you and peace from God. That's what Paul said. Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, God's ready. He was, what's this? He said, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So then, God's rewards are grace and peace. All right, teach it. You can't buy grace. Teach it. Teach you can't afford peace. Teach it, teach it. The word, the word, the word, the word translated grace is shots. C-H-A-R-I-S was a common greeting used in the Greek world. Paul was expressing God's grace to the Philippians in the midst of being chained to a Roman God. Unfortunately, most of us in the same situation will be explaining, not, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be complaining and explaining personal gripes in, instead of uh, administering God's grace. You gotta get this. If we grasp a simple understanding of the grace of God, we soon discover that the luster of grace is not diminished by the ashes of adversity. Grace shines the brightest when problems seem the darkest. Unless I 
If I had received what I deserved, mm. I would be in hell today. <laughs> if justice was served, mm. wow. I wouldn't be chained to you. Right. I would be in the pits of hell. Yeah. However, yeah. Mr. Roman soldier, yeah. God saw fit to meet me where I was and greet me with words of grace. Not long ago, I met Jesus on that road to Damascus. And God saved me. And I didn't deserve salvation. Nor could I have earned heaven. But I learned one thing. God's grace is sufficient for every trial. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, first son. Watch this. Watch this. 
Uh, that's past tense. Begun a good work in me. And will continue this work. Watch this first story. That's present tense. Until the day of Jesus Christ. That's future tense. All right, all right, all right. All right. So we've got past, present, and future tense. Yeah. All in one verse. Yeah. Come on, come on. The older you get, well. you will be motivated less. And I'm speaking from experience. The older you get, you, the older you get, you will be motivated less by what God does for you. And more enamored by what God chooses to do through you. All right, all right, all right. I've been preaching. I mean, they have a year, uh, uh, it's 37 years. Well, it'll be 38 in May. Come on. Next year. 37 years. I'm 70 years old and I'm in a good place. Amen. I don't worry about what God can do for me. for your 
church and you refuse to let go, give in, or give up right now. These are the ones I want to talk to. When God says, this is your destiny, you must reach it and you must go there. I give you joy for the journey. I want to preach to you right now. Some people in here right now that have, you, you've been fighting and fighting and fighting and you've been trusting and trusting and trusting, but you haven't been praising and praising and praising. Praise your way through. Sooner is a praise as you praise your way through. Shout to God. God wants to turn to your neighbor. To neighbor. I, yeah, I, I'm going to testify right now. I've got joy for the journey. And I want everything that God has promised me. One of the greatest tragedies in life is to live and never to 
alles was ich alles alles was ich was ich was was seven years don't come around in one time Thank you. 
Africa. So we have to rejoice in the fact that Jesus died, rose again, not just with you on his mind, but itch in the palm of his hand and in his heart. So that won't make you rejoice for the journey. That I don't know what we do. One, two, three, go, go! Thank <laughs> you.